1974, Jethro Tull released the album War Child, and it represented somewhat of a change for the band, moving away from the album-length epics of the prior two albums and serving as a bridge between the bluesy, folksy hard rock of the 69 to 71 period and the more trad folksy kind of gryphonesque sound of like the 1977 to 79 period. Anyway, from that album, the track Sea Lion. Okay, a uh, riff in in a G minor and just kind of exploring, like hitting the thirds, the fifths, different notes with different instruments. <laughs> Yeah, I say, no, 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 no. Like, uh, I think maybe throwing in like a seventh in there or something, kind of a stately type beat going on. Over the mountains and under the sky, riding dirty gray horses, go you and I, mating with chance, calculating with good. Okay, let's catch up with the lyrics. Over the mountains and under the sky, dirt. Riding dirty gray horses, go you and I, mating with chance, copulating with mirth. <laughs> uh, yeah, Anderson's known for his references to sex. Uh, this, as a matter of fact, uh, Ed McCann once commented that of all the, um, oh, the writers outside of like hard rock, say, outside of like more of the classical classic hard rock category, who are more kind of symphonic and folk-leaning. Anderson by, tended to make the most common, frequent references to sex in his lyrics. But um, they, uh, he also um, suffixed that with the um, observation, McCann, with the observation that, um, that Anderson's boutiness tended to come off as a self-conscious stab at adolescent humor and was never like profane or really too raunchy. Yeah. Um, okay, mating, uh, mating with chance, copulating with mirth, the sad glad paymasters for what it's worth. Sad glad paymasters for what it's worth. The ice cream castles are refrigerated. The supermarketers are on Hear those drum rolls just piled driving this along. The ice cream castles are refrigerated. The supermarketers are on parade. There's a golden handshake hanging round your neck as you light your cigarette on the burning deck. Golden handshake hanging round your neck as you light your cigarette on the burning deck. That at one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. I, I really like that uh, change in, in arrangement right there. We have that, you know, violin. And, let's see, uh, um, this album, um, Orchestral Arrangements by David Palmer. And um, let's see, Anderson on this album handles, well, his usual, plus saxophone on some parts of the album. Um, oh, Martin Barr is credited with playing Spanish guitar in addition to electric. Uh, John Evan plays accordion in addition to keyboards. Um, let's see here. And uh, I, yeah, I, I guess um, the violin we just heard is someone within the orchestra being conducted by Palmer. You wear a shiny skin and a funny hat The almighty animal trainer lets it go at that You bark and whistle slightly at the trainer's gun With your whiskers mounting in the noonday sun Okay, um, catching up with the lyrics here. And you balance your world 
on the tip of your nose like a sea lion with a ball at the carnival. You wear a shiny skin and a funny hat. The almighty animal trainer lets it go at that. You bark ever so slightly at the trainer's gun with your whiskers melting in the moonday sun. These are convoluted lyrics, very visual, very surreal. Yeah, he can really load each line with vivid imagery. You flip and you flop under the big white top where the long-legged ring mistress starts and stops, and you know, after all, the act is wearing thin as the crowd grows uneasy and the boos begin, but you balance your world on the tip of your nose. You're a sea lion with a ball at the carnival. A lot of uh, thick, kind of like, it, it seems like the, 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 his vocals are being flanked by different, like, strums and such. Like, I mean, I'm hearing like this. It's like those slicing strings and then that, that really kind of trebly, kind of muted in the mix anyway, acoustic, like. Tch, tch. You balance your world on the tip of your nose, you're a sea some of that accordion that um, I was just uh, reading about here, and I guess Spoken Word by Jeffrey Hammond, although um, according to Wiki, that was only on Sea Lion 2, whereas this is just Sea Lion, well, Sea Lion, I guess by default Sea Lion 1. <laughs> I like those, the, those like kind of frontal, like how each bar is like beginning with like this roll and then. And now see the, the, the cadence just changed. It, it was kind of like, first it was kind of like a roll, then a gallop within the bar. Now it's. Dun, 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 dun. The thickness between the um, accordion, the flute, the bass, those like selective placements of, of electric riffing just cutting in here or there. Yeah, it's basically like like a four-man show with bar just kind of cutting in at choice moments. But that it was it was mainly guided by the the the, the other three instruments: the drum, bass, and and flute and, and accordion. Yeah, going from a uh, G minor to um, E flat. There is no reason, no right, no right to leave the circus till it said good night. Yeah, so a lot of um, minor chords and sharps and flats. A real thick sound right here. Yeah, um, acoustic guitar, the really troubly acoustic guitar coming in like on my left speaker, it seems. And uh, the selective placement of like really controlled electric cutting in on my right that, that, that is interesting how how you basically have like this G minor riff and you have like uh, some of those those like tertiary instruments just emphasizing different notes or, or added notes within that uh, key center. Yeah, yeah, flute, flute kind of like fluttering in on one side, uh, strings kind of cutting in on the other.
a tumultuous. It sounds kind of like almost like a circus run amok. Would you like a, a cup of tea, dear? I guess um, the uh, back cover could kind of somewhat uh, play into what was going on there. Um, yeah, just a trace of pride upon our fixed grins. There is no business like the show we're in. There is no reason, no rhyme, no right to leave the circus till we've said goodnight. The same performance in the same old way. It's the same old story to this passion play. Ah, self-referencing -refer back to the prior album. Huh. Yeah. I, I'm not very well studied in Tall's lyrics over the course of their career. But I'm wondering if maybe there are some ongoing story arcs carried out subtly between different albums that like a story that begins here on this album may get picked up on a song several albums down. They, I, I wonder if there have been discussions to, uh, uh, of that, of, of people trying to decode maybe, or if there have been theories about that like in the tall community. So we'll shoot the moon and hope to call the tune and make no pin cushion of this big balloon. Look how we balance the world on the tips of our noses like sea lions with a ball at the carnival. Yeah, uh, very vivid. Yeah. Let's see, let's hear um, another song, not from the War Child album, but from the same sessions. A, a great bonus track that uh, came out on the following year's Moo compilation. I guess the one reason to to buy that if you already had the albums before it. Um, the track Rainbow Blues. <laughs> I just love this intro, that kind of lurching, slow, kickback, you know, type of bluesy. You hear that those drums are just kind of like falling over, kind of like like t like falling down the stairs, sort of, and. And the, the guitar is just kind of like swaying side by side in this kind of inebriated state almost. Through northern lights on back streets I told the coachman just drive me on this same old destination This is a pleasant surprise. It's been a while since I listened to this track. Quite a while, actually. I, I, I forgot about this section right here. I, I, I didn't remember it. I, I, it's, it's the intro that always stands out in my mind that I'm always thinking, oh yeah, that one with it. But, but the, I, I forgot that it, it, it makes such a, an arrangement, a leap in arrangement between the intro and, and the verse. Was I hearing like um, a little like recorder in there or something? Um, anyway, oh um, you know on the album uh, War Child uh, during these sessions anyway, at one point Barry Moore Barlow plays marimba, and um, let's see this other list of credits on Discogs um, lists Patrick Holling, the leader of the Phil uh, musical Musica of London. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, and Ian Anderson doesn't just Ian Anderson plays both soprano and alto sax during during the sessions. Yeah. And I Let's catch up with the lyrics here. Through northern lights on back streets, I told the coachman, just drive me on. It's the same old destination, but a different world to sing upon. So he threw back his head and he counted. I jumped out about five to nine, and I waved at the stage doorkeeper, said, Mr., get me to the stage on time. Huh. So I guess spoken through the from the point of view of a guy trying to get to the next gig, I've heard a few stories about that before. Um, yeah. 
so maybe kind of like stuck in like traffic or something and, and um, he has to be on stage in a matter of minutes um, yeah. but before he gets on there life is kind of mundane he's facing the same commuting challenges that all the people in that a lot of the people in the audience may have faced oh but the rain wasn't made of water and the snow didn't have a place in the sun so I slipped behind the rainbow and waited till the show had done. Interesting. So did he actually attend his own? I love the flowering of the string right here. It wasn't me they were shouting for, eh? Um, hmm. These lyrics are taking kind of a turn. I packed my ammunition inside the crowd was shouting encore, but I had a funny... I had a most funny feeling it wasn't me they were shouting for. Huh, but in the prior, in the chorus, he said that he had slipped behind a rainbow and waited till the show had done. Okay, so when the tall dark lady smiled at me, I said, oh baby, let us go for a ride, and we came upon two drinks or four and popped them oh so neatly inside. Um, it, it ought to be noted that um, Anderson was a real clean living uh, figure in the rock community at the time, especially for this time. I mean, he was anti-drug. Um, I, I don't know about his um, stance on alcohol, but he, he, he was not among the uh, performers of that era that, that got caught up in, in vice. So, um, he, he, he was outspoken, I guess. I, I haven't seen the interviews, but Ed McCann stated that he um, was uh, quite outspoken in his anti-drug uh, stance during, uh, long before it became... Uh, fashionable for, for rock performers to come out against drug use. Okay. Oh, but the rain wasn't made of water and the snow didn't have a place in the sun, so we slipped behind a rainbow and lay there until we had done. Okay, so the same chorus that but this time with someone he's not alone yeah uh, i guess maybe that he's referring to um like a groupie yeah <laughs> Okay, maybe this song is about the depression that traveling musicians often face, life on the road and the loneliness. And so it resolves with him finding just some jollies with, with a female fan after the show. And uh, how, I guess it, it kind of keeps him sane. Yet at the same time, the loneliness and kind of depression about living soup, living like hotel to hotel just never really goes away. It's just like the same thing next night. Mm. And um, it, that, that, that it's not quite the glamorous life that that maybe some people in the audience might might imagine. Sure to be rude, but you can drive me to the airplane But don't let me catch those rainbow blues Oh, and the rain wasn't made of water 
Okay, yeah, we're going back to that course again. Um, let me pack you deep in my suitcase. Oh, there's sure to be room for two. Or you can drive me to the airplane, but don't let me catch those rainbow blues. Um, okay. He's parting from the woman that he spent the night with. Part of him wants to kind of take her along. Knows it's impractical. And it's just going to be another parting. Yeah. And the snow doesn't have a place in the sun, so we slipped behind a rainbow. A lot of uh, minor keys in this one too, yeah. Kind of, kind of that, it kind of has that sort of like plotting quality that, that characterized this band. Um, um, I once saw this this term used to describe the move, uh, described there, or described like some, a lot of Roy Wood's music as being more rock than roll, or kind of like like all rock but no, but no roll. It's a description I often think of when I, I think of Jethro Tull, because there aren't, like, a lot of fluid moments in Tull music. Apart from, like, well, like, the A album. Um, a lot of them just tend to be kind of, like, you know, lumbering, kind of just have this kind of sludgy, kind of stop-start type quality. This, Yeah, um, but it, it's one of the things that when you get into their style, you, you just kind of, like, learn to love it. You, you love the grit. You love the just chunkiness of it all. See how the, those strings are adding to like the thickness of the big thunderish, thunderous riffage? My favorite part of the song. Oh, and just a, uh, you know, kind of jamboree right at the end there, you know, flute and just pile driving drums and a bit piano and yeah, that's Rainbow Blues by Jethro Tall. An extra from the uh, War Child sessions, ultimately released on like CD reissues of the album included, in, uh, along with um, a few other goodies that uh, were part of the sessions, like Paradise Steakhouse, Sea Lion 2, and such. Yeah, uh, War Child, yeah, another great album by Jethro Tull, um, released in 1974 on Chrysalis there. Um, let's see, their 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th studio album. And theoretically, there are 8, if you count the, like, Chateau Le Disaster tapes and uh heck heck they had like 10 albums they th this was kind of like almost like their 10th when you consider that they there's like an al more than an album's worth of material not on any of their prior albums on their living in the past compilation yeah very prolific band throughout well for like the first 16 years of their existence anyway yeah from 19 um from 1968 to 1984 barely a year was missed with without uh, something new from uh, Tall and, 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 or sometimes just Anderson, but uh, yeah, I made, I made numerous lineup changes and such, yeah. Uh, yeah, you just couldn't contain the creative mind of, of Ian Anderson and where it would go next. Um, and every few albums uh, reinventing himself, um, but, but always Tall nonetheless, always had that flute, always had that, that you know, one-legged, you know, minstrel before the stage. Anyway, for more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Jethro Tull, see the directory of albums by English J artists linked in the description below. Like and subscribe and follow me on social media and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the two tr songs we just heard, the instrumentation, the layers, the interplay between this lineup of musicians, um, certain touches, certain nuances that stood out to you, um, certain things about the way certain movements, certain riffs came together with the odd instrumentation and interjections and just the unique way that this band has of 
combining rhythmic elements with uh, kind of artful musical layers and such. And the lyrics, yeah. Um, observations you might have about the lyrics to these two songs, yeah, what your interpretations would be. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most air-traveled trimaximist, signing off.